Welcome to our studio. As you know, we have a tradition at Hello Leiden. Every time we have new guests, we ask them to bring um, a special item that has an emotional value for you. And today we have asked you to bring us um, little items that has special value for you. Why don't we start from you, Alison? What did you bring to us today? Sure. Um, I brought my passport. Great. Um, and I brought it because Yeah, I mean, that's how I came to live here, obviously. It was my first passport. I got it when I was 24, and it took me to 49 countries. That's fantastic. What a travel, huh? Yeah. Great. Thank you for sharing it with us. What about you, Hongxia? Yeah. I took a Chinese paper card. So this word means full, like happiness and uh, lovely life. So I bought it four years ago when I came to the Netherlands. So that is quite like an expectation for my future life. And now it's also like a summary of my life. It's also really happy and lovely in, in Leiden. Beautiful. Did you make that? No, I just bought it. <laughs> Great. Thank you for sharing it with us. So, as you know, we make short profiles um, about you um, to introduce you to our uh, audience. Uh, why don't we start from you, Alison? Let's watch what, where did you take us? Hello. Hello, Alison. Hi. Come on in. Thank you. What a brilliant day to see each other. It is, and the sun is finally out after all this terrible weather we had for the last little while. So such a green room. You have like avocado, other trees. So I really like it. I think that when you kind of bring nature in, you just feel a lot better. And I also figured out that if you water plants, they stay alive. How come you ended up in Netherlands, all the way from California? All the way. I actually came by way of Montreal. I've been living abroad for about 16 years um, and I came here for work um, seven and a half years ago. First time you came here, what do you still remember from your early days? How stunningly beautiful it was. I came in October and it was still quite a warm, nice October. It was so beautiful and charming and I think it just it captured my heart instantly. Who's this third person in with us? Oh, this is Chef. Hey, Chef. Want to say hello? Mm -hmm. Any good at cooking? Yeah, he's pretty good at cooking. He's pretty good at supervising, huh? You're pretty good at supervising, aren't you? What makes this place buzzing for you? Um, I really like to read. So this is my little reading corner over here. Um, sitting in the sunshine, sometimes in the backyard. I cook quite often, um, and that's really from zero to hero. So I really like using my, you know, fresh ingredients, growing some of the basil and the the mint in the backyard. So you are reading mindfulness and the heart of business. What is it about? So the heart of business is really taking a look at um, bringing compassion and looking at um, how how to change kind of how we've been looking at capitalism. So um, that is really interesting. And then the other book I'm reading is my fun book, is, the, is a big series. So I always um, have this one tucked, to, tucked somewhere close where I can get it. And Chef is trying to have his lunch. Yeah, he no, wants to. No, 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 sir. No, sir. Come on. Come on. What connects you with this place? Uh, okay, so to make it a home, it's just been a slow evolution you know, of having old furniture and getting new furniture and bringing um, the chest, you know, we found that second hand and it even has the little Leiden paper on it and slowly building the shelves. It was just, it's been little by little. And I think, it, you know, these small incremental changes are what have, has really made it a home. Um, and we really like secondhand things. So, you know, a lot of things in our house are also secondhand. So good that you mentioned secondhand. What's your favorite thing, Luke? Ooh, that's a difficult one. I think um, there's one in the, on the direction of Haserwalderdorp. Whoop! These little ones that are in like the villages that are around here, these are my favorite. 
because they have just hidden gems that you don't necessarily find in Leiden. Um, but in general, it's just, I like them all, to be honest. How much of your work is done from home? All of it, 100%. Um, I look forward to um, going to a co-working space in the future. And I also look forward to meeting clients in person in the future. But so far, it's just been a world of Zoom, uh, Google Meet, and uh, Teams. It's the, the cleanest, neatest kitchen I have ever seen. <laughs> Who keeps it this way? 50-50. Uh, There's a strategic partnership on that one because it's not all my responsibility. We both eat here. We both live here. So um, I think we both do a very good job of keeping it clean. And I'm curious to know, what is this? So this is the molecular structure of caffeine and um, we happened to see it on a blackboard somewhere on vacation and thought that's really cool. And um, as you can see we have like the little coffee plants here and uh, we're also roasting the coffee beans um, ourselves as well. Um, and this is like the, the new love of the household. It's also, we got it second hand. Um, and we're super thrilled. Um, my hus husband has become like the barista of the house. So when it comes to good coffee, he's doing a good job. Great. Thank you for inviting us to your home, um, Alison. And it's so nice to have a boyfriend making you uh, coffee it is. in the morning. I had a coffee made this morning, but I had better say it's my husband. Otherwise, I might get in trouble. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great to know. No, definitely a husband. Yeah. Um, you did talk a little bit about mindfulness um, and how it is the center of your life. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about what mindfulness is for you in general? For me, it has been about just finding uh, the slow pace in life. Um, and I think many people got to experience that during the corona times. Um, but I like to have it all the time. That's great. Why don't we watch uh, Where Did Hongxia Take Us? Hi, welcome. Hello, Hongxia. How Hello. are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, this is my boyfriend, uh, Xin Wei. <laughs> Hello. How did you end up in Leiden? Uh, I think it's really nice. And um, and four years ago, I want to study the PhD study. So I contacted my promoter here and in Leiden. And also, I applied for a scholarship in China. And uh, uh, at the end, it is a success. So I, I just went here and continued my PhD study. In Leiden. What's the best place to eat Chinese food in Leiden? I think one of the best restaurants is a hot spot that is really close to the Yangbo. I, I really recommend other people uh, who like Chinese food they can go there for yeah for food for Chinese food. <laughs> Please go on let's let's go inside. What do these postcards remind you of? I think these are a lot of memories in my uh, study in Leiden. Um, I went to a lot of places with my boyfriend and also my friends, like those places in Barcelona and this, um, yeah, a lot of places. And uh, for example, about this cycle, roads it is for the momentary for the Leiden University uh, for 144 years. So I went to cycling with my friends and we really had a lot of fun. And who's this guy? Oh, and he's my idol, and uh, he's a really famous actor in China. And every time I see him, it uh, helps me to in, uh, to be energetic again, because there are a lot of research questions in my PhD study. So I think I need some power to cheer me up. <laughs> yeah. How you met both of you? Yeah, we met uh, in China uh, when we are master uh, master students. Uh, and then we apply the CSC scholarship to the Netherlands at the same time. And then we came here together. So who cooks most of the time? He or you? He. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, has we, uh, we together cook it. Yeah, but he has better cooking skills. You know, he's like <laughs> the manager. You can do this, you can do that. So we just have a cooperation team. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is my like notebook of my life and uh, my research here. If okay. you want, I can show you there. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. Sometimes I will use like Chinese and English to record all my life here. Like 
on 16th of December in 2018 and it was snowy. So I just uh, write some feelings here and also on 17th of December I have some several struggling so I just write my feelings how I can cheer me up and uh, have the new life again. So I just record everything I have. And I see a music instrument there. Who, who plays that? Uh, me. <laughs> it happens uh, four years ago because at that time in the first three months it's a little difficult for me to get used to the new environment. You know, the new, new culture, uh, new working environment. So I just bought a, you know, ukulele to help me to get used to here. Okay, I'm going to show a Chinese song. Thank you. You also invited us to your home. Yeah. And introduced to your uh, boyfriend, right? Not husband yet? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Great. What an amazing hobby you shared with us. Um, I played the ukulele sometimes and I bought it, I, I think, also four years ago. At that time, it's a little difficult for me to get used to the new environment. So my colleague advised me to play some, you know, like musical instrument. So I just bought it. Lovely yeah. and handsome Chinese boy on the poster. Yeah. Did your uh, boyfriend get jealous that uh, you take inspiration from a poster boy? No, I think he's fine. <laughs> yes. And I think he's just um, Yi Long, and he's just my idol. I really like his uh, working style. So sometimes he just cheers me up. I like. I really like him. Yeah. That's lovely. We all mm. need one to have on our walls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Alison, rooted in Kong. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how did you came up uh, with uh, the whole concept and what inspired you for it? Sure. I actually came up with the name first, which is kind of the opposite way that most people do it. Um, and then I realized that, you know, our world is full of chaos and noise, and, and I was part of it. Um, and all of a sudden, I took this time to pause. And I would say the journey started maybe about three years ago, um, but really culminated over the time that we were in lockdown and, you know, making time to reflect on everything that brought me to live in Leiden, um, what I wanted to do with my life here, and and also to think about the future. And that's how I, I went through this process myself, and that's why I now guide other people through this process as well. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Hong Xia, uh, what has inspired you um, to research um, e-health? And in general, uh, what e-health is? Mm. Yeah, the first question is about maybe I want to share about what e-health is. Mm -hmm. As we all know that uh, the internet is really de developing the world. So I think e-health is like using the information and te uh, technology uh, to uh, help about the healthcare. And I think that's, uh, that is one of the reasons why I want to do research about e-health. Because in China, uh, the e-health has been like the three, one of the three most important pillars to support the healthcare. So I want to learn some successful experience in the Netherlands and then use it in China to support the healthcare as well. Yeah. Great. Alison, um, what advice do you have for people who are struggling from working at home at the moment, especially during COVID time? Yes, um, to give yourself some slack because it's been really hard. No one knew really how to do this, not under the confines that we've had to work. And I was fortunate. I wrote my dissertation on the impact of digitalization on workplace teams. And I also myself worked in a very hybrid environment mm -hmm. for several years. And even I have really struggled over the last year in the, in the solitude. So I think that we need to connect with people as often as we can and go in different spaces if our house allows it. So the computer work I do, I sit behind the computer and the conversations where I'm just having a coffee or a chat with a colleague, I try to take them downstairs. So at least I get this office experience sort of from walking away from my desk. Great advice. Thank you. Um, Hong Xie, as a um, public health researcher, um, what do you think are the effects of um, 
working from home for people, especially in a very long lockdown period? I think working from home, in t maybe I can take an example from myself, because I really uh, love the Zumba and also um, it at home. But uh, at one time uh, during the work uh, lockdown, I play the exercise every day and I work every day and watch uh, movies every day. But suddenly I just get really depressed. Mm -hmm. I just cannot helping, uh, uh, help uh, crying. So at that time, I think there is no solution that can help me to to be healthy, you know, in mood. So I think that's one of uh, really um, in, um, severe impact on people's health from mental health. So then I just, like Alison said, I just have so several social interactions because I try to call to people, try to call my Chin uh, Chinese and Dutch colleagues, and I get better. Do you think it's been difficult because your family is on a different time zone as well? Yeah. So. <laughs> I never called my families because, because I think they will be worried about me. So I always called my friends. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want uh, the, them to be worried about me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a real challenge that it is. The, those international ones of us have faced over the last uh, year and a half is being away and not wanting to put that burden on. So we're trying to connect to, to other people that you know, we might not have such a developed social network. I mean, even after some years here, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, how do you think people should tackle that, Alison, now that uh, you have been doing a lot of uh, mindfulness sessions? I think connecting with what, what makes you happy mm -hmm. and what really works for you. And that's for me what I, being calm, I always say I believe calm is a superpower. And I think when we are calm, then we can operate from just a, a different space and we can think through things more clearly, we could see maybe we're depressed about the situation, not to maybe an extent to see a doctor, but we're really struggling. And then, you know, just being open and, and maybe being vulnerable to telling a friend, I'm really struggling, I don't know what to do. And if we haven't learned it over the last 18 months, it's okay to say, I have no idea how to handle the situation, then I think that's really a loss that we didn't learn it during this period. Yeah. yeah. I really agree with you because I think sometimes you really need to ask for your ask for help. So not only just dealing with this uh, difficult situation by yourself because it will not work well. So I think I really agree with you. Yeah. Um, Hong Xia, um, what kind of possibilities do you think eHealth um, offers to people, especially during the lockdown and especially during the COVID period? I think. Uh, we already have some several benefits because we can work from home through the uh, internet like Zoom link and we can also have the e-health like to have several social online uh, connections because we already like in our group we already we already have um, established like online borrow mm. so we can have coffee or have several uh, communications about our current life so I think sometimes it's really good Maybe just spend one hour, so not talking about your work, just talking about your life. Alison, secondhand stores. Um, you already mentioned your fascination with it. Um, what is so special about secondhand stores? And in the age of um, consumerism and uh, more mindfulness around consumerism, um, do you think it is really important to do secondhand sh uh, shopping? Or why is it important to do secondhand shopping? You know, for me, it's second nature. I grew up secondhand shopping because the, the, we didn't have the money to always do firsthand shopping, let's say. And I just think that, you know, you can give new life to something, um, something that is someone else's yeah, junk, so to speak, becomes your own treasure. Mm. Um, and I think there's no shame in, in giving something to someone that they will really like, even if it's not new. And I think that you know, that's this, you know, giving it a more uh, circular approach where you might not use it anymore, but you know somebody that will. Um, I think we kind of shown a light that especially millennials are really interested to do the right thing and not just fast fashion or things like this. And I think that, you know, the world has to stand up to that because if you look at what's in the landfills and, um, you know, kind of this over consumerism, not making people happy. You're not happier once you've gone to whatever the department store is. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And, and just buy all these things that you wear three times and 
are probably made of uh, plastic, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, Hongxia, how is it in China with the secondhand um, shopping, so to speak? I cannot say like in China, in the whole China, but for my uh, daily experience, sometimes I will get some like secondhand gifts from my friends, but not a lot. But uh, when I came to the Netherlands, I, it's really euro to get like, second uh, hand gifts from my colleagues. So I think it's really a good way to recycle the products. And, uh, and also for me now, I always search the second hand products on Facebook. And I also realized that like in LMC, we have a green team. And we try to, you know, like uh, recycle the papers we had, and also to save the papers, like printing. We we would like to use more about computer to use a computer to have meeting, not the paper. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely helps. Alison, have you been able to engage Leideners in your um, mindfulness sessions, or you have more of uh, international community to engage with? A little bit of both. So um, I have partnered with the Leiden Expat Center, and so this has been fantastic in terms of reaching really the expat community and international community here in Leiden. And then you know, through my own network, then sometimes it is more international. So I, I uh, hosted a webinar um, not that long ago, and we had guests in the US, throughout Europe, and Japan as well. That is lovely. It's very exciting. Amazing way of socializing as well. Yeah, yeah getting definitely. Getting more people. Um, what is your method of socializing apart from um, organizing webinars with the expat center? I mean, how do you uh, find the connection with the Dutch people and, you know, what kind of tools do you use for interaction? So let's say pre-COVID uh, in the times where we could be social, um, just finding this connection. Um, sometimes, you know, you realize you see a, a student cycling by with so many beer crates on the bike that you didn't know it was possible and you just make a comment with the person standing next to you. And my Dutch is not perfect, but I can get by. And so those little conversations sometimes add up over time. Um, and I think it's the American in me, like we really like small talk. And so you want to have a little chat at the grocery store. And to be honest, um, especially people that are older in their years, they are really keen to engage. Um, and I found in my own uh, neighborhood I live there's a large uh, senior center at the end of the block. I engage with, um, with them probably more often than anyone else, um, just because of their willingness to communicate. What about you, Angshia? What has been your experience so far with socializing in Leiden? Um, I think my social uh, socializing circle is more about my Chinese and the Dutch colleagues. Mm. So I really have several uh, lovely roommates. And when I came here in the first three months, it's really difficult for me to really get to the strange culture and also the new working environment. So I really cried a lot. <laughs> and, but my Chinese, uh, Dutch colleagues, they really encourage me a lot. And they tell me just, you know, head come to hood. And they even print a paper on my computer to let me see the sentence every day to tell me that after three months, you will be fine. So I really have really sweet uh, Dutch colleagues. Yeah, and also uh, I made several uh, good friends uh, in, uh, of the Chinese friends. So we had the dinner every week and share our difficult time, our happiness, and maybe some questions for the Dutch, uh, for the Dutch culture. Like also, you know, the app download uh, to check the weather every day. I also heard from a lot about it. So it's really nice to have such sweet uh, social circle. Do you, could you say do you have uh, some Dutch friends? I, I do. And I think, you know, when I first moved here, I was working for a startup. So it was very much work hard, play hard. Mm. Um, and, you know, as you're growing up, you kind of grow out of that to some extent. Um, I still like to work hard and I still like to play hard, but my hard play is different these days. Um, and over that time, I've really grown to, um, in my old neighborhood, get to know the neighbors through a walking dinner um, and, and just spending time. It just takes time. It's, you know, we think that uh, we found Prince Charming on our first date or Princess Charming on our first date. We did not, most of us. So it's, you know, you have to have um, these experiences and, and try go on the coffee date with somebody and realize you'd never want to talk to them again, <laughs> or that you have that click and you just slowly uh, do it over time. I, I, I think you're right with the, you know, three months. It just takes time. 
Yeah, I think it's really a good reminder, maybe also for future study. When you start in a new environment, you will know that three months are good time for you to get used to the new environment. So it's really a nice experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And also COVID time has changed a lot of ways of socializing, which makes it a bit harder to advise anything to the newcomers, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Hongxia, what is your favorite memory of Leiden so far since you have been here for four years? Yeah, I think uh, the most beautiful uh, memory is that I joined one of my Dutch colleagues' wedding. Oh, it's, it's really different from Chinese wedding. So it's really like a big party and everyone just give the best wishes for the couple. I really feel that the close connections between everybody in the party and everybody is really happy. And at that time, I feel that, oh, I am a member of those, those big party. So at that time, I think it's the most beautiful memory of my yeah, life in Leiden. That is beautiful. Yeah. What about you, Alison? What is your best memory of Leiden so, so far? Oh, I actually have to say, you really reminded me of um, the day after my wedding. So I was married in Leidedorp, and the next day we cycled there because we lived in the city center. So we had to cycle back home after the wedding, and we had cans attached to the bicycles, and we went down the Breestraat making all the noise in the world. <laughs> And, you know, everyone just is really cheering you on and, and really there to celebrate. And, you know, of all the memories, this one came to mind as you were telling the wedding story. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. A way of, um, yeah, integrating a, a bit of your culture with, uh, <laughs> with the Dutch exactly. element and the bicycle. Exactly, but leaving on your bicycles. And, you know, we have the, the families really uh, got involved. And it was, you know, everybody had a laugh from it. The neighbors, the students, everyone. Lovely. I think we, we met a lot of lovely people here. I really like people here. People so are so kind and really lovely because they always make some jokes and to make me happy. Yeah. So in my suffering time, I really like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Alison, um, a bit of a serious subject. Um, addressing the elephant in the room, the Trump. Mm. Um, there has been a lot of negative talk around Trump mm -hmm. during his presidency and as an American traveling the world. How did it make you feel? It was difficult, to be honest. I mean, I, I lived abroad during uh, George Bush uh, Jr.'s mm -hmm. presidency where people had a lot to say about the way he ran the country and our national politics. And the day that Trump was elected, you know, it happened in the morning by the time we got our results here in the Netherlands. And eyes wide open, I had an idea of what that would feel like because I had been in this situation before. Although I think that the polarization to the US and the rest of the world mm -hmm. became so much more extreme. And it just saddened me because I think that the US has so many great attributes and qualities and <clears throat> they became overshadowed. And that, that was disappointing. So that's, you know, now that, and I think our position, I say ours, the U.S.'s position in the world is fundamentally changed now, and it's going to take a long time to find a new place, which also has its benefits, you know? China had a couple of rules around the birth control. Uh, so there was first uh, one child law, and then there was a second one, and now it's uh, uh, three, chi three children well, so to speak. Um, how did it make your family feel or your friends? How that experience been like? Yeah, I think uh, it's a difficult question <laughs> because actually I'm not really, um, yeah, how to say it? I think uh, these policies are just for the specific situations in the specific time. So I, for me, I really support our country, so whatever the decisions made, because I know that they are considering a lot of um, situations and under this condition they think this policy is good for people so I, so I support it I think my family is as well great that's the end of another episode of hello Leiden um, we will see you again next Saturday at the same time at 9 p.m. so if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and you have story to share just like Alison and Hongxia did today please email us at hello Leiden at slotestad.nl have a good evening.
Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Welcome to Leiden. Hello, 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 Leiden.